When most people think of Sub-Saharan Africa, they think of an ancient land untouched by migrations, often portrayed as the genetic birthplace of humanity, the starting point for all modern humans. And while it is true that modern humans first evolved in Africa, the genetic story of Sub-Saharan Africans is far more dynamic, diverse, and surprising than most realize. In fact, recent genetic studies have upended long-held assumptions. New data reveals not only the immense depth of indigenous African ancestry, but also waves of ancient population movements, internal migrations, and even backflows from Eurasia that have shaped the people of Sub-Saharan Africa over tens of thousands of years. What if we told you that some East Africans carry traces of ancient Middle Eastern farmers? That Central African hunter-gatherers are more genetically distinct than Europeans and East Asians are from one another? Or that West Africa was home to civilizations whose DNA still echoes across the Atlantic? Sub-Saharan Africa is not a monolith. It's a mosaic of ethnicities, languages, and genetic lineages. From the Bantu-speaking farmers who migrated across half the continent, to the pastoralist Nilotes, to the forest-dwelling pygmy groups and ancient Khoisan peoples of the South, the genetic roots run deep, tangled, and wide. And there's more. Scientists have recently uncovered ghost populations, now extinct humans whose DNA still lives on in modern African genomes, hinting at ancient interbreeding with mysterious archaic humans that predate even Neanderthals and Denisovans. This is the story of the real genetic origins of Sub-Saharan Africans. A story of ancient resilience, forgotten kingdoms, and biological legacies that stretch back further than almost any other on Earth. And it's a story that's only now beginning to be told, through the power of DNA. Sub-Saharan Africa holds a unique place in the human story. It is the cradle of our species. Genetic studies confirmed that modern Homo sapiens first emerged on the African continent over 200,000 years ago, and for tens of thousands of years they remained there, diversifying, adapting, and forming distinct populations long before humans ever left to populate the rest of the world. What's most striking is that the deepest genetic lineages in modern humans are found within Africa, specifically in isolated hunter-gatherer groups like the San people of Southern Africa, and certain Central African pygmy populations. These groups split off from other human populations as early as 100,000 to 150,000 years ago, making them some of the oldest surviving branches of the human genetic tree. But the surprises don't stop there. In the past few years, geneticists have detected evidence of ancient interbreeding with unknown, archaic human groups within Africa. These ghost populations left no known fossil remains, but their genetic footprints are unmistakable. It's estimated that some sub-Saharan populations carry between 2% and 19% DNA from these mysterious archaic ancestors, suggesting the human evolution in Africa involved more complex mixing than we previously thought. This finding is extraordinary. While much attention has been given to Neanderthal and Denisovan ancestry in non-Africans, it turns out that Africans harbor even older, possibly more diverse archaic DNA from lineages that diverged from modern humans, perhaps as far back as one million years ago. Additionally, as early humans adapted to different ecological zones, savanna, rainforest, desert, and mountains, their genes changed too. Unique genetic adaptations to malaria, lactose tolerance, high altitude, and immune response evolved independently in different African groups further widening the internal genetic diversity of the continent. All of this tells us one important thing. The human story doesn't begin with a single tribe in Africa, but with many distinct human groups evolving side by side, sometimes mixing, sometimes separating, for tens of thousands of years. This deep divergence within Africa predates anything seen elsewhere in the world. In short, Sub-Saharan Africa isn't just the origin of humanity. It's where human diversity began, long before the rest of the world knew what was coming. One of the most significant events in Sub-Saharan Africa's genetic and cultural history is the Bantu expansion, a massive, slow-moving wave of migration that began around 3,000 to 4,000 years ago and reshaped the continent forever. Originating from the region that is today southeastern Nigeria and Cameroon, early Bantu-speaking peoples developed agricultural techniques, iron tools, and domesticated animals. 
As their communities grew, they gradually migrated in two major directions, eastward through Central Africa into the Great Lakes region and southward into modern-day Angola, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and eventually all the way to South Africa. But this wasn't just a cultural transformation. It was a genetic one, too. Modern DNA analysis reveals a striking pattern. Bantu ancestry is now found across most of Sub-Saharan Africa, often blending with older indigenous groups. This spread wasn't a violent conquest, but rather a gradual assimilation. In many regions, Bantu migrants mixed with local hunter-gatherers, like the San in the South and Pygmy groups in the rainforests, creating genetic signatures that still persist today. For example, while modern Bantu-speaking populations in the South and East of Africa share a common West African origin, they also show clear evidence of local admixture, including genetic adaptations to high altitude in the East and resistance to endemic diseases like malaria. In fact, this blending is why East African Bantu groups can be genetically distinct from their Western cousins, despite speaking related languages. Interestingly, the Bantu expansion also helps spread specific genetic traits, such as lactase persistence, which allows adults to digest milk, an adaptation that became beneficial in pastoralist communities. It also introduced and dispersed iron smelting technology which further accelerated social development and mobility. Today, over 300 million people speak Bantu languages, and their DNA connects them across thousands of miles, from the Congo Basin to the plains of Tanzania, and down to South Africa's coast. Genetically, culturally, and linguistically, the Bantu expansion is one of the most powerful unifying forces in African history. Yet even as this expansion tied the continent together, it also preserved regional differences, layered atop older, deeper genetic histories. The Banta story is not one of erasure, but a fusion, a wave that reshaped Africa, but never drowned its diversity. Beyond the Bantu expansion, Sub-Saharan Africa holds other distinct and ancient genetic lineages, particularly among the Nilotic, Cushitic, and Afrosiatic-speaking peoples. These groups, while often overlooked in popular narratives, are crucial to understanding the full tapestry of African genetics. Nilotic peoples, such as the Dinka, Nuer, and Maasai, primarily inhabit regions of South Sudan, Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. Their ancestry traces back to ancient pastoralist populations that moved southward along the Nile. Genetically, they show unique adaptations, most notably genes associated with height and strong immunity, believed to be advantageous in swampy, and riverine environments. Their DNA reveals a distinct separation from Bantu populations, reflecting thousands of years of different evolutionary pressures and lifestyle patterns. Cushitic speakers such as the Aramo and Somali peoples are found mostly in the Horn of Africa. Genetically, they show a fascinating blend of Sub-Saharan and West Eurasian ancestry, reflecting ancient migrations from the Arabian Peninsula and even earlier interactions with North Africa and the Middle East. This mixture is visible in both physical traits and in genetic markers, making the Horn of Africa one of the most genetically diverse regions on Earth. The Afrosiatic language family, which includes languages like Hausa, Amharic, and Berber, connects peoples across North, East, and parts of Central Africa. Genetic studies suggest that Afrosiatic speakers often carry deep ancestry linked to both ancient Northeast African hunter-gatherers and early Near Eastern farmers, tracing back to a time before the Sahara became a desert. Together, these lineages reveal how Sub-Saharan Africa's genetic story is not dominated by a single narrative, but shaped by multiple migrations, adaptations, and cultural flows. Each group carries its own ancestral memory preserved in DNA that still pulses through modern populations. Long before the rise of agriculture or the great migrations that shaped Sub-Saharan Africa, there were communities whose ways of life remained deeply tied to the land for tens of thousands of years. Among the most genetically distinct and ancient of these are the San of Southern Africa and the Central African Pygmy groups. The San people, also known as Bushmen, are often regarded as custodians of the oldest unbroken genetic lineage in the world. Genetic studies of their mitochondrial DNA have shown that their ancestry diverged from that of other modern humans over 100,000 years ago, 
long before any known civilization. Their DNA reveals minimal mixing with more recent populations, preserving unique markers that provide a window into the genetic makeup of some of the earliest Homo sapiens. Similarly, pygmy populations in Central Africa, such as the Mbuti and Baka, possess unique genetic signatures that set them apart from both Bantu and Nilotic peoples. Their DNA shows evidence of ancient isolation, coupled with adaptations to tropical rainforest environments, such as short stature and high disease resistance. Despite living in close proximity to other groups, they retained a distinct genetic identity for tens of thousands of years. These communities are more than just outliers. They are living links to our species' deep past. Their genetic heritage challenges assumptions of linear progress and reminds us that diversity within Africa is older and more complex than any single migration or language group can explain. In today's world, many of these ancient groups face cultural erosion and marginalization. But genetically, they continue to speak, offering vital clues to the early chapters of human history that began in Africa and ultimately spread across the globe. One of the most remarkable aspects of Sub-Saharan African genetics is the way it reflects a deep, ongoing interaction with the environment. Over tens of thousands of years, African populations have developed genetic adaptations that help them survive and even thrive in challenging climates from savannas to jungles and in the face of deadly diseases. Perhaps the most well-known genetic adaptation is the sickle cell trait, which provides a defense against malaria a major killer in tropical regions. While carrying two copies of the sickle cell gene can cause sickle cell anemia, carrying just one copy grants partial immunity to malaria, offering a powerful evolutionary advantage in malaria endemic areas. This mutation didn't come from Europe or Asia. It emerged independently in multiple African populations, a clear testament to the continent's unique evolutionary pressures. Other adaptations include the Duffinol allele, common in West and Central Africa, which protects against a different kind of malaria parasite, Plasmodium vivax. Some East African populations also show lactase persistence, the ability to digest milk into adulthood, a rare trait globally, but one that developed in pastoralist societies where dairy played a key role in survival. Moreover, genetic resilience extends to skin pigmentation, a trait honed over millennia to balance UV protection and vitamin D synthesis. While most sub-Saharan Africans have dark skin, recent research shows this pigmentation comes from multiple genes, reflecting diverse evolutionary responses, not a single ancestral change. Together, these adaptations demonstrate that African DNA has been shaped as much by natural selection as by migration. This is not a static story, but one of continual evolution, where climate, diet, and disease pressures left lasting marks on the genome. Sub-Saharan Africans are not only the oldest branch of humanity, but also among the most biologically resilient, a fact increasingly appreciated as science digs deeper into our shared human origins. For centuries, the story of Sub-Saharan Africa was told through the lens of outsiders, colonial historians, traders, and explorers who often portrayed the region as static, isolated, or lacking historical depth. But modern genetics is turning that narrative on its head, revealing a complex and dynamic history that reshapes how Africans and the world view African identity. Far from being homogenous, Sub-Saharan Africa is genetically the most diverse region on Earth. Populations living just a few hundred miles apart can be more genetically different than people on opposite sides of Europe or Asia. This diversity reflects thousands of years of migration, trade, intermarriage, and adaptation, long before European contact. Yet cultural identity doesn't always align with genetic ancestry. A single ethnic group might contain individuals with vastly different ancestral backgrounds, while different tribes may share common genetic roots. This contrast reminds us that language, culture, and self-identity evolve independently of genetic lineage. For example, the Bantu expansion reshaped the continent's linguistic landscape, but Bantu speaking groups today may carry DNA from indigenous hunter gatherers, pastoralists, and even early Nilotic peoples. Similarly, the Fulani, known for their nomadic lifestyle, 
show genetic markers linking them to both West African and North African populations. As genetics peels back layers of forgotten history, it's empowering modern Africans to reclaim their past on their own terms. DNA isn't replacing cultural identity. It's enriching it, offering deeper context to share traditions, languages, and migrations. In the process, it challenges outdated stereotypes and affirms a truth long known by many Africans. Their heritage is ancient, vast, and deeply interconnected with the broader story of humanity. When scientists map the origins of the human species, all arrows point back to one place, Sub-Saharan Africa. This region holds the deepest genetic roots of all modern humans, so deep, in fact, that the genetic diversity found within a single African village can exceed that of entire continents outside Africa. Through ancient DNA studies, researchers have uncovered a staggering truth. Every human alive today is descended from ancestors who lived in Africa roughly 50,000 to 70,000 years ago. But long before the famous South of Africa migration, numerous human populations had already been thriving and evolving across Sub-Saharan Africa for tens of thousands of years. Some lineages, like those found among the Khoisan-speaking peoples of Southern Africa, have been shown to split from other modern human groups more than 100,000 years ago, making them some of the most ancient surviving human populations on Earth. Other groups, like the Mbuti and Bayaka Pygmies of Central Africa, also retain unique genetic signatures that reflect long periods of isolated evolution. This deep ancestral record makes sub-Saharan DNA the key to understanding humanity itself. It holds insights not just into where we came from, but how we adapted biologically and culturally to different environments, from resistance to tropical diseases to traits like skin pigmentation and lactose tolerance. The genetic legacy of sub-Saharan Africa continues to shape the global population. In the end, the DNA of Sub-Saharan Africans doesn't just tell their story. It tells our shared story as a species, reminding us all of a common origin and a remarkable human journey.